Good afternoon and welcome to the third concurrent session of the day, which is called Customizing Hawks Courses for Any Environment. Our presenter today is Taylor Ireland with Hawks Learning. If you have any questions for the presenter during the session, please feel free to enter those into the Q&A section at the bottom of the Zoom screen and we'll address them at the end of the talk. We're also giving away three $25 Amazon gift cards at the end of this session. To enter for a chance to win, click the link in the chat to enter your name onto the prize wheel. And with that, I'll hand it over to Taylor. Thank you, Joanna. And thank you to all that are joining us today. I'll start with sharing my screen. So as Joanna mentioned, um, my name is Taylor Ireland, and we'll be talking about how you can customize Hawks for any environment, um, which is definitely relevant in today's virtual world that we're still navigating. We know that online courses um, are not going away. So a lot of Hawks features can be really flexible to and conducive to that type of learning environment or a lecture style, um, emporium, learning support models, kind of all of the above. So to get started, um, I wanna go through, since we have a lot of different disciplines joining us today, the different course offerings that we have. So for English, this will be the developmental level um, and then English composition and a version with integrated review and some other um, ancillary sort of resources. And we also just released a new thematic reader, which is pretty exciting. So kind of your um, introductory courses, whether that be writing, literature, things of that nature is kind of what we have materials for. And then with mathematics, we'll offer everything from your most basic math, um, some combination courses, all the way through calculus and statistics. So just a quick look at um, those options. And then our college algebra and pre-calculus titles are also offered in an integrated review format, um, which would include that prerequisite content, content um, sort of built for the, that co-requisite or learning support structure. Um, continuing on with what we have to offer in math, we have different pathways titles, um, even business statistics, which we, re we released a new edition of, liberal arts math, and then um, beginning statistics, discovering statistics and data, and viewing life mathematically are all titles that also offer that integrated review version. Again, um, just offering the just-in-time prerequisite or remedial content included. For economics um, or business related courses, we do also offer um, principles of micro, principles of macro, and then a combination of the two principles of economics. Um, if you have how's that course all in one. And for the social sciences, we'll have um, introduction to psychology and introduction to sociology. Um, so to kind of flip gears and share a little bit more about Hawks as a company, if you're unfamiliar, we do have sort of three core values um, that we really keep in mind. So the first one to keep in mind is the level of support that we can provide, whether or not you've used Hawks before. Every time you call into the office, you'll receive a live representative within four rings. Um, that is Monday through Friday during um, our hours, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time. Um, so you'll have immediate assistance there. It's the same number that I use, your students would use. It all goes to the same um, area. It's an all hands on deck approach to get you your answered, your questions answered immediately. Um, we also offer a 24 seven live chat support. So if you're a night owl and you're working really late on a Sunday evening before classes start on Monday, you still have that to access and the response time there is less than a minute. And then unlimited training and support. So your school would have a designated training and support representative or team of representatives to work with you for implementation. And not only that, but questions and trainings throughout your entire use of HOC. So we're here to help at any step of the process. And with these customizations, it's really important to keep this support in mind because we're happy to help you know, implement any one of these um, different options. In terms of affordability and um, purchasing models, Hox does provide, we pride ourselves on providing low cost materials and something that we offer that no other publisher offers is lifetime access. Um, and why we kind of have this sort of purchasing model chart here is because a lot of schools are moving to that first day access model. And with that, um, the lifetime access won't apply since it's already being billed through their tuition. But we do work with that inclusive access purchasing model. It 
So it decreases the price direct to the student um, of our materials, but then they would be able to take advantage of that lifetime access if getting through the bookstore or directly from our website. And if there's any courses that you're interested in, um, you can connect with a Hawks representative or stop by the booth after this, and we can get that information to you. Um, but all in all, we provide temporary access. So any way you look at it, students could have access to their course content um, on that first day, regardless of purchasing model. And then just some other additional resources that we provide in general. Um, and I'll dive into all of the ones that you see on the left hand side as we navigate into the student software and everything on the right hand side as well. Um, but student resources, Hawks offers air specific feedback if students get questions incorrect in the practice mode, step by step tutoring and helpful hints as well in the practice mode, and then they can create their own um, practice tests. And then on the instructor side of things, we do provide um, for almost all of our titles, chapter projects, lecture slides, and then we do have that full question bank available too. Um, last but not least, to kind of circle up on those core values, we saw affordability, support, and last but not least, Hawks is unique in the way that we approach mastery. So we do believe in that mastery-based approach and actually have combined that with adaptive remediation to really pinpoint students' areas of weakness and um, hold them accountable for learning the content and showing that they know it while providing that helpful, um, helpful resources to get them to that point. So to jump over to the student platform to talk more about this, oops, I'll exit here. And just go into a lesson. So we'll go through statistics today, but keep in mind that everything that I'm sharing is applicable um, to every other discipline as well. So we'll go ahead and jump into a lesson. And um, that three mode learning path or approach to mastery is going to be the same here, regardless of the discipline. So every single lesson in Hawks follows a learn, practice and certify approach, that three step learning path. Um, and it just makes it easy for students to um, you know, know exactly what they need to be working on every single time that they go to an assignment. So it's really ease of use is something to keep in mind with Hawks. So the first mode here is learn. And in every one of our titles, this is going to be that integrated textbook or ebook content. The best part about students coming to learn rather than launching from that ebooks page is that you can customize it. Um, so everything included here is what would be presented in the textbook. But if you wanted to, um, add in your own notes that supplement a page like you see here. It's going to bring the Cox content up top. Your notes will pop open at the bottom. As you can see, that could be embedded videos or lecture slides or links to readings, Purdue OWL, um, a video on psychology or sociology. Any of the above, um, you could link within here just to add to the Hawks content, or you have the option of completely hiding a page and um, covering up everything that is there if you didn't like a particular example or you don't teach this specific method. Um, or the last option is completely replacing a page. So if you wanted to use one of our pages as space and then provide your own authored content or additional material, you can do so as well. So lots of options with editing here, um, which you can't necessarily do directly through that ebook tab. Basically, the the best part about those customization options is that Hawks is giving you everything already preloaded within here as that baseline that you can then build off of um, to customize things to your curriculum. Now, um, specifically for math, and then we do have a couple of videos in Learn for psychology, sociology, and economics. Um, we'll offer example level videos that are integrated directly within these Learn pages that will walk through the problem presented below on the screen. An instructor walks through that step by step. And then um, in the humanities disciplines, this will be something more along the lines of a concept video where we introduce the concept, give its definition, um, provide it in an example, and then ask reflection questions at the end. But for every single title that we have to offer up at the watch tab in the top left, every lesson will have a lesson summary video. So th this is included in every discipline, every title that walks through a quick overview of everything covered within the lesson. If you do find a student benefits more so from those videos. All videos in Hawks are linked at Hawks TV as well. Um, and that's an open source library if you wanted to go check it out.
Now, outside of the learn mode, a ton of customization options there with the content itself. And now the second mode is practice. So practice is just as it sounds. This is where students are coming to take what they've learned and practice it with a set of questions, whether that's, um, you know, for more of the humanities style courses, having them apply the definitions that they have learned from the learn mode using those key terms, or in math, practicing with um, different types of questions that they could get that pertain to this topic. Everything that they're doing here is not graded. So if they make mistakes, it's totally fine. They're not going to have any uh, points deducted, anything like that. So we'll go ahead and answer this first question. And we'll say 438 for the second option. So let's say that the student is working within this assignment, they submit their answer, and they see that they got that question incorrect. Again, no worries, they're not having any points taken away, but something that Hawks does uniquely, instead of just telling them that their answer was wrong, is giving students this explain error feedback. What explain error does is repeat the question at hand, what the student had submitted, and then we take it a step further by providing them with the reason why their answer was incorrect. So oftentimes when you make mistakes, the most important question after that is, okay, what did I do wrong? That's exactly what this is providing for the student. So in this case, um, when I used greater than or greater than sign, this is the right idea, but the null hypothesis must include the claim that the parameter is equal to the hypothesized value. So we know that this is supposed to be an equal to sign, except uh, it's not necessarily saying that that's the answer, but giving them that push in the right direction, because we still want them to be critical thinkers and make those connections themselves, but we're still identifying exactly what was wrong within the question right as that student made that mistake so that they can learn to correct that mistake and not repeat it when they see the same question type later on in certify or the homework portion. If this feedback needed to be taken a little bit further, they could always go to step by step and see that tutor option up at the top right, go to the learn mode and um, review the content or watch those videos again, or see a fully worked out solution or answer to the question as well. Now going back to practice, taking that feedback that they have received, um, again, right in real time when it's the most valuable, they can come back and reattempt that question here. Or what they can also do is select try similar and now it's going to give them a new version of that question. Um, what I like about try similar, especially with those humanities disciplines is that we will provide them with a new, completely new scenario. So it really is um, taking that approach of making them be critical thinkers and really applying what they've learned to different situations. Um, they can also skip over any question in practice if they wanted to spend their time um, working on what questions that are more difficult. So I'll go ahead and actually answer the first part of this question and move forward. So let's say that I get to this part, compute the value of the test statistic. Oftentimes, if a student initially reads a question at first, you know, maybe they don't exactly know what to do. They're not familiar with what it's asking. That first step is really just the hardest part. Um, at any point, if the student needs a little bit of assistance, they do have this tutor option available at the bottom left-hand portion of the screen. Tutor is going to open up to a step-by-step -step breakdown of the question, um, specifically through math and maybe some of the more math-based economics questions, but it's interactive in its nature, nature so that students can answer alongside this tutor, display the step answer as well at any point and see what that is, and then go back to practice or continue moving forward um, through each page here with this tutor option. The best part about this is that it really guides them through the entire process from the beginning to end in getting that answer. And then for math questions, um, maybe for you know your most basic math that don't involve a lot of steps or the humanities disciplines, instead of a tutor, what we have is a helpful hint. Oftentimes that helpful hint is going to provide the definitions for the relevant terms that are being used in the question, or it will provide another example so the student can learn how to apply that same concept in a similar context and just get that reminder of what it was. So tutor in total is really just giving them that push in the right direction and sort of guiding them through um, the thought process to um, be successful with working with in these questions. Now up at the top right in tutor again, just like you saw in explain error, they could always jump over to the learn mode and also see the solution here. Now um, going back to practice, there is one other option um, 
that you can turn on for your course and it's called a send to instructor button and what that does is take a screenshot of the question and it allows students to enter into a text box and send it to you through a messaging system um, that's another option especially if you teach online courses we'll see it used that opens up a lot a level of communication for you and your students um, within the content now leaving the practice mode learn and practice are there and put within this lesson to pre best prepare students for this final mode of certify so certify is what they are completing for a grade it's that graded homework portion and you'll see that our mastery is set at around 80 percent by default so when i jump into certify the first thing to note is that it's actually the same exact set of question types that the student had already worked on from practice. We're just going to provide them with new scenarios or new algorithmic generations. Um, that's the order is also going to be scrambled a little bit so that you know every student doesn't have this exact same version of this question as the first one to work with. The biggest difference between practice and certify is the removal of those learning aids at the bottom portion of the screen. We find that students rely really heavily on that outside help. Um, they kind of lean on them like a crutch. And so if a student gets to any question and um, they needed a little bit more assistance and they see that they have that tutor option available or a help me sort of option or ability to go back and read the book as they're completing that homework, um, they're most likely going to access that learning aid. And the problem with this is that they could work through an entire assignment leaning on those learning aids. So when they walk away, they probably don't have quite the grasp on the material as you would like them to. The reason you assign homework in the first place is really to prepare, prepare them for the quizzes or tests, exams, things of that nature within the course. So we really want the homework to be a more effective learning tool, which is why we remove all of those learning aids to really hold your student accountable for walking away from this assignment, having understood that content and really having that good grasp to prepare them. Oftentimes, if you see learning aids within the homework, students are getting 100% or really high scores. And then when it gets to a quiz or a test, they're not performing at that same level. So here, what we're really trying to do is bridge that gap by holding them more accountable within the homework. You'll see that translate over to those higher stakes assignments. So now um, with that mastery percentage of 80%, out of these set questions, the 19 um, questions and steps here, the student can miss four or as many that are indicated by this heart meter up at the top right. So the student can miss four questions and still receive a 100% full credit grade at the end of this assignment because they achieved mastery. So that 100% is really the carrot at the end of the stick to continue um, to encourage students to work towards that mastery. Now for any student that dips below your designated mastery level, we're going to send them back to the practice mode with a custom set of questions according to what they had missed and certify. So that's where the adaptive remediation component comes in. We're saying, okay, you didn't quite understand this material. We're gonna send you back to practice where you have all of these resources provided to you to get some additional assistance, have a better understanding of the content. And we're only gonna have you work on those exact concepts that you don't know, whether it's something like stating the null and alternative hypotheses or um, you know, placing a comma within a sentence, anything such as that, we're going to send them back to that specific set of questions, give them what they need. And then when they feel comfortable and confident, they can come back and attempt certify and do so as many times as needed in order to achieve mastery. Ultimately, at the end of the day, you want your students to work on the content until they know it. And that's the same um, purpose behind this mastery based approach. And what it's going to do is help those scores that they achieve in the homework translate over better in those higher stakes assignments. Now, in terms of customization within practice and certify, because the two modes are a mirror of each other, you have the ability to hand select questions. So um, you can remove questions that we have in our default curriculum, add other ones in that you would like to see included. You can adjust mastery to be a little bit higher or lower, although we do really recommend around that 80% level. Um, you can also turn on what we call flex mastery, um, which is going to allow your students to have one additional attempt per question. So if I get something incorrect here and submit that as my answer, it would give me the opportunity to retry this question or accept one of those strikes within my lives up the top right. 
So a couple of, um, we'll go ahead and display the solution to jump back, but a, a lot of different settings that you can set up here, which also within the lessons. But I think one that's um, definitely worth mentioning, just depending on your student population, um, your course format or modality, how you're teaching it is turning on our require practice feature. Require practice is going to have students complete a certain percentage of the questions in practice before unlocking certified. So you can send that, set this up in a number of ways where you can allow students to initially jump into certify right away, skip learn and practice, and if they are unsuccessful at certifying, so they don't master, after that first attempt at mastery, if it was unsuccessful, they get bumped back to practice, and then it requires them to go through a certain amount of those questions. Or you can just lock them out from the start and have them practice first before they're allowed to unlock certified. A lot of different options there, um, but that's just, those are the main customization features within these um, homework lessons. Now, jumping back um, to create a student practice test, as mentioned in one of those slides, um, students can create their own practice test through this web test tab here. So you have the option of creating your own um, tests and quizzes, whether that's something that's di a grammar diagnostic. We do have those pre-created that we could upload for you, or it's just a general quiz, anything like that. I'll share with you what that interface looks like through this practice web test. So we'll go ahead and add over a couple of lessons. We'll say we want three questions from each lesson for a total of nine and even time this practice test. So the student wanted to know what exactly they needed to study before an upcoming assignment. This is a great study tool for students to use. Um, so I'll answer a couple of these questions. Obviously, I'm not putting in much effort here, um, but just to give you all an idea of the report at the end, as you can see, the interface looks very similar to practice and certify. Again, we're trying to really keep things consistent for students so that you know it doesn't look for ease of use purposes. Um, they have some resources here for statistics. And then they can also jump ahead and hide those that they've answered, jump ahead. But the biggest difference between the practice and certify modes and what this looks like is that they can move back and forth between the questions with these panels versus submitting an answer one at a time. So whenever the student is finished with this assignment, whether it be a real quiz or this practice test, and they go to submit their assignment, they will see a dialog box. It even pops up, it pops up if it is complete. So we're just giving students an extra opportunity to go back and review their work. We'll go ahead and submit this practice test. And at the end, depending on the settings that you have enabled for your online assessment, um, students can review their test, see their grade, and then scrolling down, the student can actually identify the specific sections or lessons where they missed the most questions and need to go study. So this is a really great, again, study tool that when I click into lesson 1.3 here, it's going to give me a customized set of questions according to what they had missed on that practice test. Um, so again, that's kind of what that testing environment looks like. So to switch gears, I'll go back to the course really quickly and mention one more thing before we look at the um, how you do, how you set all of these things up on the instructor side is the to-do list. Um, so you actually have the option of customizing this to-do list. You could make it match what you have set up in your LMS system um, and customize these headers to be something like module one, where you have all chapter one assignments and then a chapter one quiz, something of that nature. So you can really drag and drop to customize this to-do list. I would say that with um, LMS integration that we offer now, we don't see that needing to be done as much since our Canvas and D2L or Brightspace integrations at least offer the direct links. Um, but this is another option if you are going that single sign-on route. So I'll go ahead now and jump over to my instructor account. And if at this point there are any questions on anything that I've shown on the student side, please go ahead and submit those um, before we flip gears to go through the instructor customization tools. So just logged into our single sign-on platform for instructors called teach.hawkslearning.com. And I will go into a math grade book. 
Um, so you have a lot of customization options when it comes to setting your course up, most of which I already mentioned, just walking through the student side, but I'll kind of give a quick overview of how you can implement those. Um, as just to mention, you do have the option of customizing how things are graded through Hawks. So, you know, if, if all, um, if you wanted to automatically drop a quiz grade or have the grade structured just for like lessons, quizzes, and tests, or if you wanted to add in a final exam bubble um, or grading section, all of that can be adjusted and you can create your own late penalties. So if you wanted students to have percentage off for late work, you can set that up to be fixed um, where it's, you know, 100% after it's been due, taken off so they get a zero, or it could be graduated where they get 10% off per day until up to a certain number of days. So in terms of grade settings, those are those options, but I do want to really spend our time more so underneath this assignments tab. Um, underneath the assignments tab on the left hand side is where you're going to be managing everything, every assignment that you're in and pieces of assignments um, that you're administering through Hawks. So first things first, with those lesson due dates, you have a lot of options here, but the Hawks gradebook in general works in a template format. So if you're teaching three sections of Mat 101 and there and one's online, and then the other two are face to face on a Tuesday, Thursday, you can use different homework due dates depending on those um, on when you want the assignments due for each course. You could have an online homework or a self-paced course where you don't you have soft due dates and then where you have strict due dates for your other courses. But if you wanted to just select something new, you can go to the drop down and use the same template that you've set up for multiple courses. So you're only really creating one thing one time. Um, now, jumping in here, when you go to assign the homework lessons, because everything is preloaded with a default curriculum, all you're really having to do is select the what, what lesson to assign, and the when. When is it going to be due? Um, it's pretty simple um, to go through and just to choose the calendar and select those due dates and a good pacing guide for the semester. But then you also have some other options here. So underneath additional options, you could actually assign any one of these lessons without a due date associated. So that can be something like a chapter review and then um, mark it as bonus. So the student would get, I realized I clicked the wrong one, but chapter review and then bonus if you wanted it to be for extra credit or something like that. And then you can also select here a visible on date. So if you didn't want to overwhelm students with the amount of content that you have assigned for a semester, um, or if it's a more um, accelerated course and there's a lot to get done within eight weeks, you could hide that or use that visible on tool so they can't really see uh, upcoming assignments until a certain date within the great um, semester. You can also adjust how many points those assignments are worth over here on the right hand side if you're doing more of a points-based gradebook. And then um, you have the option of setting up prerequisites as well. After you've gotten your lessons assigned, that's when you'll wanna go through and actually customize the curriculum within those lessons. So this is where you would go to make those adjustments to learn, practice, and certify. As I jump in here, you'll see again that we have those same template formats. So you could use the same curriculum customizations for all courses or make it different depending on um, some of these settings up at the top. So after you've set up your curriculum, you can choose to share it with other instructors, whether or not if you wanted to require that practice feature, that would be this next checkbox. Again, that flex mastery tool that would allow students to retry that missed question um, with new values instead of receiving that strike um, on their lives. And then you can adjust mastery um, over here at the right hand side and just a couple of other settings up at the top. Now looking down below, you'll notice that these lesson names are hyperlinked. So as they're hyperlinked, that allows you to click into those lessons and then edit the content itself within there. So first it's going to take you to um, Lesson Builder, which is going to give you a full list of all questions available for the specific chapter and lesson that you're looking at. So right now, all we're looking at are questions for lesson 1.1 1 .1, um, in college algebra. Now you can collapse this and review all those different learning objectives, the level of difficulty here and the occurrence or whether it's already included in that assignment or not. You can also search the question bank and then expand those questions again to review what options you have to add to the assignment. 
On the right hand side, this is what's already included in practice and certify. So these are those questions that are selected in our default curriculum. You could easily just select remove and remove anything here and then add over what else you wanted. Mastery can be adjusted up here at the very top. And then um, if you're interested in editing or making adjustments to learn, that's what would happen here in the settings gear symbol to open the learn mode, which is going to give you those check boxes up at the top right where you can hide a learn screen, replace the page completely. And then here's that text box area where you can add in those additional notes. Um, another thing to mention, and this has to be set up for an entire course ID, so it would be every single section of composition or every single section of introduction to psychology at your school, but you can um, remove and rename these lesson prefixes. So if you didn't want, if you wanted to cover um, some textbooks, you know, aren't necessarily linear. Um, and so if you wanted to cover lesson 2.2 before lesson 1.1 you could remove these numbers so that it's not confusing for the student if it's out of order you could also rename those lessons um, if you would like to to be something else if you wanted it to align more closely with your syllabus so this is editing the content within those lessons and then again, just as another quick note, you can adjust mastery, the strikes, and then the question order as well. But what I think is nice is um, after you make adjustments, you always want to save those changes and you can see anything that you've edited and what date that you last edited that assignment through the date modified over here on the right. Okay, now leaving the curriculum adjustments up next is web tests and web test is where you would go to create any assignment outside of the learn practice certify homework lessons so this could be a worksheet that you're printing for class this could be a final exam a diagnostic test like you see here anything like that um, so if you wanted to create something new you'll select the create new option and it's going to work very similarly to that lesson builder so the left hand side i have my question bank i could use my curriculum i've already created that's custom or just go to all questions select any chapter, and then I could have Hawks automatically create an assignment for me with you know three questions from each of these three lessons. It would equally pull those over. Or I can go into any lesson and actually review and hand select the questions that I'll be presenting on that assignment. So it's going to open up here, and we always provide all of this in a scrollable format just so it's easy for your review to say, okay, I like this question, let's add it on over. You'll see that in use button so you can see if it's already included and then any multiple choice question option this is more relevant for math but has this pink mcq box that you can add over and what that looks like here is if i check this now my answer choices are going to be provided in a multiple choice format um a couple of settings let's full screen this test you can change the amount of points per step make it a bonus question see what new values are um, or the answer. You could also lock a value. So if you wanted to on a common final make benchmark questions to see whether students met or did not meet objectives, locking the value would mean that every single student would get these exact values or the exact question using the same scenario, um, things of this nature. And then you can also through the actions drop down pool questions together to create some more variety within your assignment if it's going to be taken online. Once you've finished creating this worksheet or assessment of any sorts, you can go to file and print right up to the top left. You could export this to a docx file where it's completely editable if you wanted to change the wording, the spacing, or maybe this is for English and you wanted some essay based questions at the very end. Um, or last but not least, you can assign this as something for students to take online. If you're assigning something for an online course, when you select that test, you'll notice that it asks, prompts you to edit the settings over here at the right. So through these settings, um, they, there are some that you will need to set up, such as that start and end date and time. So when is that test or assessment going to open and when is it going to close? You can decide on when you make it visible to students, password protect it, set a test length, how many attempts they get if you wanted to give them more than one, 
Um, and then which assignment group that's automatically going to be graded within. And again, we do offer those late penalty options for test two. Um, student settings by test is going to adjust these same settings for a particular student. Let's say you have an athlete that was traveling during the test time, you just needed to open up that time for them. You can absolutely do so. You can set up prerequisites and then through additional settings. Um, this is going to give you that option of when, if and when, students can review their tests and grade. You could give credit for unsimplified answers in math if you're allowing them to, you know, submit two fourths as an answer. We do integrate with Respondus Lockdown Browser and you could always make a diagnostic and then set that proficiency level here. So plenty of settings if you are administering something through the Hawk system online and do changes using the web test tool. Um, now, kind of switching gears, looking at the questions themselves that you're adding into your assignments, we do offer this question builder tool, which is going to allow you to create your own questions in Hawks. Um, this is a pretty powerful tool. So it's what we use to add in questions as well. And as you can see, we have a bunch of test folders um, here. We do recommend you being really specific in how you organize the questions that you create, just so you can easily add them into your assignments later on. So if I want to create a new question, you can enter in the question header, which would be directions, images, expressions, and then the actual question statement itself. And we give you a lot of options below to make this a multiple choice based question free response, open-ended if it is more um, humanities-based. And then we also offer in our humanities disciplines, click to select. So they're identifying something out of a passage or a sentence, and then click to insert maybe proper placement for a comma. You can make those types of questions as well. Um, you can add in your own tutoring feedback, add in explain error for those incorrect answers. And then as well, we do have a variable manager. So if you were um, familiar with Excel, you could create multiple versions to your question through Excel and then copy and paste those values here into our variable manager and make your questions dynamic, just like Hawks. So that's not you know one version to it. If you're interested in building your own questions, we do have plenty of resources available and I definitely recommend um, we have some webinars as well that we've done in the past on it. So it's definitely something um, unique to use if you wanted to add in some of your own content. And then last but not least, here underneath the um, assignments tab, that student to-do list that you can customize. Basically, it's as easy as dragging and dropping your assignments and adding those headers from here. And it's automatically going to save um, for your students. So you could customize those lists if you would like to for um, that to do list part of the dashboard. And now the lot the thing that I'll finish up on here before we take questions is one of our recording options that I think gives you a closer look into student performance in order to better customize your assignments to the level of difficulty that's appropriate um, based on student performance. So going into Assignment Reviewer, Assignment Reviewer allows you to take a big picture overview look at class performance within lessons, and then a more micro look at um, the questions involved in student performance. So at a glance, this is showing um, you know, how many students have certified on time, late, or still have yet to complete or master in the lesson. And then down below on the right-hand side, we have average time on task information and learn, practice, and certify. So if we wanted to take a closer look at lesson 1.1, um, jumping within here, we're going to see a detailed list of the students within my MAT 101 course. I could sort this score column up to the top to see how which students were the ones that did not master, how many attempts they had at certify, and then their specific time and learn, practice, and certify. Um, as you can see, Eric, who hasn't spent as much time in learn and practice, has certified um, in more attempts, or it's they still haven't certified yet, but they've had more attempts at certify than anyone else, probably because they're not taking advantage of those resources. 
So this gives you a closer look at how, what students are actually doing as they spend time in the platform. But more importantly, in terms of customizing your assignments, when you hop over to analytics, this is going to give you a closer look at the actual question performance within that assignment. So if you find um, the most commonly missed questions, and let's say there's a question after two semesters that back to back students, 90% of your students were missing it. Well, that's a point to reflect and say, is this even worth having within here? Is the level of difficulty too high? Things of this nature. So you could actually see you know, what question type that students, most students were struggling with. In this case, it was plotting this set on a number line. And now I know lesson 1.1 serial number seven, maybe I won't include that on a quiz or a test or even on my next semester's um, assignment if it was too hard of a question. So I think this um, gives you a lot of insight into what you're asking within those assignments. And you can see the same information um, at the test level. So if I wanted to go back and I have web tests, you can review um, test by question. So every student's answers for a specific question, that's another way to use it too. But that will just give you a little bit more insight into those assignments and maybe how you wanna change them for future semesters. Um, but that's where I'll pause. I see a couple of notifications, maybe questions or chats. And so I'll kind of turn it over to Joanna. All right. Well, thank you so much, Taylor. That was all really great information. A couple of comments here from instructors about how much they appreciate um, how in-depth we went here with this presentation. So thank you for um, covering everything that you did. We do have a few questions here. Um, one of them is, is there a way to set up prerequisite assignments? Yes. So a couple of different areas in which you can do this, depending on if you wanted it only to pertain to lessons or if you wanted prerequisite assignments before a test. So let's say that you um, have a sort of self-paced course, but you want to be sure that students are completing the homework lessons before they can open a test. When you set up that web test, you can always go to the settings and here through prerequisites. You can um, choose which lessons are going to be a prerequisite for that test, or you could make, you know, lesson 1.1 a prerequisite for students to be able to open lesson 1.2. So if you really want them to be working through that course content in a specific order, that's a really great um, implementation. All right, perfect. Thank you. Um, another question here. Can I share the questions I create through Question Builder with other instructors at my school? Yes. So we do have a lot of um, capabilities, again, with a template format in general with our gradebook. You can share as much or as little as you would like to with other instructors. So through Question Builder, you have those um, I'm trying to permission options to share or not share the questions that you create with others. All right, excellent. And again, as Taylor mentioned, we have a lot of really in-depth um, webinars that are recorded and posted on our blog specifically that go into more detail with the question builder tool. It's a really powerful tool. So definitely check those out if you're interested. Um, one last question here. What if I only want to use certain portions of the textbook? Yeah, so when you go into lesson due dates and you're selecting the assignments that you want students to be working within, I'll jump back to the student side of the platform really quickly. Um, students are only going to see on their to-do list specifically what you've selected to cover within the course. So this is what they're looking at as what they need to complete and anything else that you're not specifically assigning, they would have to go over here to lessons, then to all, and then go into any chapter within the textbook to review any other content that you haven't selected. So using the software, you can get really um, selective with exactly what you wanna cover. And that's really all that's going to be presented for students. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for clarifying that. That is all the time we have for questions. And I wanna make sure we do get to our um, prize winners in just a moment here, but thank you so much, Taylor.